Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 40 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the worldwide headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia, and looking forward to having some great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's Great. We are highlighting another great organization this week and have Tammy and Nazarel Chowdhury with us from Remembering Austin. Tammy and Nazarel, it's great to have you on and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So as usual, we're going to try to get uh, right to it. And so um, Tammy, maybe start with you. If you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and anything you'd like to share. Um, I have lived in Gastonia since 1996 and we raised our two sons, Joshua and Austin here. And we lost our son, Austin, in 2017 to an accidental overdose. Um, and he was just 24 years old. Okay, thank you. Now, sir, what about you, sir? Like Tammy said, you know, we moved here in 1996 I have because of a small business I have here. Okay. And that business I started in really right here in Cherryville, North Carolina. <laughs> okay. And from there, the business grew. We sent our kids to schools in Gaston County, and uh, and I I felt like they got a great education in Gaston County, and from here, one of our son went to UVA and Austin went to UNC Chapel Hill, and he, then Joshua came back and got his law degree from UNC Chapel Hill. And Austin stayed there for six years, got his master's in urban planning. Okay. And after that, he came home. And exactly four weeks from that, he overdosed from an accidental fentanyl overdose. And that's what we are here to talk about, how fentanyl is really affecting our community. Okay, well... I appreciate you sharing that. So kind of maybe now we'll stay with you. Just from that, can you kind of let our listeners know, I'm assuming that's what led to the organization, Remembering Austin. So what can you fill us in about uh, kind of how that got started and uh, maybe go ahead and what's part of the mission? What is it that you're, you're trying to accomplish through through the organization? So when this happened, we were kind of didn't know really what to do and why this happened. So I knew that I wanted to do something in the community for nonprofits or do something that would help the community. So my good friend, Jaggi Anad, he introduced us to Bill Gross, Donna Lockett, mm -hmm. Velma Tormena. And uh, so we had a meeting and from there, we learned that they had Gaston Control Substances Coalition right. was already formed here. But mostly what they were doing is they were educating the medical communities, community like the doctors and dentists and anybody in the medical community, but they weren't doing anything to educate the citizens of Gaston County or the families that are affected by opioids or addiction. So that's where we came in and we said, you know, there's a group that you're completely missing that really needs to be educated. And that's where we came in and uh, started that Remembering Austin. And from there, I said, how do we help or fund other organization that doing the job, that's where my old friend Ernest Sa Sumner <laughs> came in. So we went to uh, Gaston Community Foundation, sat with Ernest, and opened our uh, fund. It's called the Austin's Opioid Education Fund. And from there, we started helping the Gaston Community Foundation, Gaston Control Substances Coalition, uh, anybody that we could help to educate the community. That's how it's all started. And I really want to thank my friend, Jagi Yeah. 
Yeah, I work. I had the great fortune of working with Juggy on Gassing Together. Um, I'm specifically on the on the marketing uh, side there. He was a t- terrific. He's a terrific community servant, and I learned a lot um, working with him. So uh, I appreciate you sharing that. And I have to. I will add just my own personal experience. Before I was on the Gassing Together board and involved, gotten a little involved with the um, coalition. Yeah, I had no personally had no idea how much of a problem uh, that it was, and I'm talking about the opioid uh, epidemic. I think in subsequent years, you you hear a little more. You've we've heard a little more about that in the media and in the news. But going back seven or eight years ago, yeah, it was just something that wasn't on my radar uh, at all. Um, so, Tammy, is there anything you would add to that uh, re- relate to the mission or specific initiatives that that you you guys are are doing or involved with? Um, our our mission is always to educate the families and the kids. Um, if we could get in the schools, that would be great because okay. that's a big problem. It's very hard to get in the schools, and I feel like the younger we, get, we can get into the schools, the better. Like you said, seven or eight years ago, nobody was talking about it. Um, we didn't even know anything about it. So mm-hmm. when all this started with Austin, he was probably 15 because uh, he was prescribed – and that was another problem, the prescribing with the pharmaceuticals. And when we went to Gaston, um, the controlled um, Gaston Controlled Substances Coalition, that's where we really got involved. And they were busy trying to get the prescribing under control, So, but they forgot about the people. Right. And that's where we came in and said, well, what about all the people that are dying? What about our son? What can, our mission is to prevent it in the first place. And prescribing was a big thing. And Austin was prescribed um, hydrocodone for the pain for a dental procedure. And from there, um, whatever went off in his head, in his brain, um, it was a constant problem from there on. I mean, he would stop. He would go back. But even then, I thought, pills. Uh, I never heard of really people being addicted to pills. When you think of kids, you're thinking of drinking or sure. smoking or I just wasn't thinking, so I just thought it was something experimental, but it wasn't. So um, education is so important, and all it seems like most families think it could never possibly happen to our child, and that's where they're wrong. So that's really what our mission is. There's more people we can talk, and for people to be able to talk about it openly without stigma, which is a huge thing, because when eight years ago, like I said, nobody was talking about it, and if you talk, and I wasn't even talking about it to my closest friends because I didn't want him to be judged, and we shouldn't be afraid to talk about it sure. because it is a disease. So that is our mission. Well, I can't t- go back to my point. My involvement with Gassing Together, I mean, I, I became aware of lots of situations, and and and, and so, um, but but I also know that I'm in the minority, right, of of being able being aware of what's going on in the community. So you know, I think. Between you guys and the the coalition, there has been a lot more discussion here locally uh, about it, but it's still not um, the, the the stigma is a good word because and, and there's there's actually a stigma about so many topics it seems like, but this one specifically um, is one that you know as a as a parent, I mean I'm, I'm a parent of three kids and so I can I can imagine myself thinking mm, do I really want to talk about that you know because you as a parent you might feel like it's a reflection on, on you, which is just awful to even think that, right? But um, that's just the way of the world. So, uh, again, I appreciate you you sharing that. So what are, um, this might be a, a tough question, but um, well, how long has the, when did you actually start Remember in Austin, the actual organization? I see it in, in October of 2017, right after he passed away. Okay. That's when we, we didn't want to wait. Sure. Because we thought every day we wait, somebody else is dying. So we thought we start this right away and see if we can help. And one thing I wanted to say is, I know we started this, and a lot of people still, since Austin passed away, we lost four or five more kids in the same school. Wow. So that. Wow. So people need to know, in last year, about 100,000 kids, people overdosed. Since 1999, about 841,000 people died from that. And I wanted to say one thing is, I'm not 
ashamed of Austin's opiate use disorder, what I'm ashamed of not knowing sure. how to help him. Right. So this is why we didn't want to wait to start this. So that's when it's all started. Is it, um, it seems like I have read some, some articles recently too. It seems like early on we were making, seem like locally there was some progress being made, but then since COVID has started, is it, is it, am I correct in saying that there's been kind of an, a, an uptick again in what we're seeing here locally oh, yes. with, with opioids? It's gone way up. Yeah. And like um, Nazarul was saying, just since COVID, over 100,000, over 100,000 have died in the last year because it's kind of been put on the back burner. Right. So, which is upsetting. Be, I mean, COVID is terrible. Sure. It's, people are dying from that, but so many people are dying from overdoses, and, and we're just forgetting about them because of the stigma, I feel like. People just feel like, well, it's their fault. They chose it, but that's really not the case. Um, everybody's brain is different. Right. And so what if it was your choice? Everybody tries something. Um, you can't tell me none of us tried something when we were young. Um, but nobody <laughs> wants to be addicted. Right. Nobody wants to be a slave to a drug. So I'm not sure this is a, um, the right way to phrase this question, but you know, since the organization was started, did you have any, I'm not sure success story is the right word, but some examples where you're, 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 you've seen um, – maybe uh, a child or family that has seen a, a success with their child or something that you've witnessed here locally because of, of kind of what either you or your organization or the coalition has done? Uh, any anecdotal stories that you can have seen since then? I have a really good one. Okay. Since we started and, you know, I have a small business, so... I never heard anybody talk about drugs or addiction. Since this happened with our son, I had quite a few of my own employees came to me and say, hey, you know, my grandson is going through the same thing. My sister is going through the same thing. My mom is going through this. I grew up in this family like this. So a good example would be one of my Associates came to me and said, Nazrul, I need your help. My son is addicted to drugs. So I helped the mother, through the mother, I helped the son. He was able to get clean, and he went to serve our country. Oh, wow. And the story gets really more interesting is a few months later, after, not a few months, almost a year later, now the mom came to me, said, Nazrul, I had, a, I had an accident, and doctor prescribed me this oxycodone, and I think I'm addicted. Oh, wow. So, so she's been doing it, so we helped her, and now I feel like she's clean, and she's still working for us. So this is a happening in the same family. The whole family is addicted. And we don't realize this, that how, how it's affecting our community. But these people, I couldn't let them go. I understand that you have to take drug tests. We still have to protect our employees. And it's a safety reason we do that. But at the same time, if somebody wants to come and talk to us about that they have an, op they have an addiction, I think we should talk to them and give them a chance and help them, offer them, hey, there are help out there. Give them the numbers wherever they can talk to someone and go get help. I think as a community, our businesses need to understand when you have whatever number of employees you have, you will have a percent of your employees will have this issue, and we need to really help. Fair to say, Nazrul, that without you know what you experienced, you maybe your your employees wouldn't have felt comfortable coming to talk to you. Probably not. Yeah. But this is where, as a owner of the company or or a or a upper management, has to open the door and make the employees feel comfortable enough for them to say, "Hey, this is like any other disease. If you had a heart issue, if you had a blood pressure issue." 
if you had an obesity issue, you know, you'd come probably talk to me, but when it's come to drug or addiction, it's okay. Let us know, see if we can help you. If you're not doing anything that's going to jeopardize the safety of our employees, then we should talk. We're not going to tolerate anything has to do with our safety of our employee. Right. I understand that part. But just talking, I think it will help a lot to open up where employees will understand, hey, it's okay. I'm not <laughs> going to get fired. I right. can talk. And that's the part I think we as a Gaston community, we need to really push for that for our community. Otherwise, all we're doing is hurting our own community. These people don't have a job or they get to a position they cannot work anymore. They cannot support their family. It's costing our em- economy a lot more than you think. In the long run, I think we'll be all better off finding solution for this and work together to help the people that are affected by opioids or it may be any, another addiction. Right. What, you know, speaking of, uh, of stigma, w- what is the root of it? Um, you know, we may have a listener out there who is hearing this and they have a family member themselves. They may have a, they may have a child that they think is, is in this circumstance. What, what is the root cause of that, that people don't want to talk about it or they're afraid to talk about it? Because they don't want to be judged, and they don't want their right. loved one to be judged. Um, because they know people don't understand. So they're going to think either you're a horrible parent or they're just a bad person. And they want to make it a behavioral problem instead of, you know, a brain problem. Like, you can just stop. I think we all think that way. You have to. You just stop. But you can't just stop. It's not that easy to just stop. But... The stigma is the huge problem. If people would just, um, how can anybody get help if they can't even talk about it? If right. they can't go to somebody and say, I have this problem, how can they get help? And why would they want to go to somebody when they know that they're going to be judged for it? It could affect their job, their family, because a lot of people have different, different views on it. Their family may kick them out of the house. We see that a lot. And I understand it's difficult for families who are really going through it, and they think tough love is the answer, but (laughs) it really isn't. If you want them to die, do go ahead, do tough love and kick them out. It doesn't work. Mm. Okay. So um, we're we're unpacking a a lot, a lot here, you know, and this is um, this is a good example of really why we're why we're doing this podcast is because some of these topics are, are they're tough topics and they're heavy topics. Anytime you're doing work in the community, sometimes it's all fun and games and sometimes it's not. And so what are, um, you know, the way we word this question, I'm not sure this is, <laughs> this doesn't feel like the right way to word this question, but we kind of already talked about the anecdotal story with your, your, your team, uh, Nashville. Is there anything else that you've seen remember in Austin, the organization accomplishing that, um, I don't know that proud is the right word, but what, what y'all seen that you've accomplished with this in the last three or four years, whether it's awareness, whether it's, you know, getting involved, other groups being aware and, and getting involved or, you know, how, how, how would you describe that? Or is that, is that a fair question? Yes. Yes. Uh, so since we started, I think one of the major accomplishments we've done is working with the Gaston Control Substances Coalition because there is no way just two of us could educate the whole community <laughs> without community getting involved in this thing. And I think Gaston Control Substances, which is a part of the Gaston Together, and I have seen how Gaston Together can bring people together and help the community. As a local, we are solving local problems right. together, and that's a great thing about Gaston County. Um, you know, it's a great thing when Churches and law enforcement work together. Same thing as uh, what we are doing, educating the community. But through the Gaston Control Substances Coalition, we were able to speak at the Gaston College in front of 400 students. The other day, we just spoke in front of uh, 400 students at Belmont Abbey. Right. And uh, many other places we spoke, and I feel like 
there's no way we could have done it ourselves. So the people are getting, I think, listening, they're hearing, they're talking. Uh, so this is just an opening up another conversation, and that's our main goal. We want to have this conversation. People should be able to speak openly, and I, I feel like it is happening, and that's what I'm hearing from my friends in the community saying, Nazrul, you may not think you are doing anything, <laughs> but people are talking that this conversation never happened before. So we feel like uh, we are making a small uh, difference in the community, and hopefully... We are saving some lives. Well, just yesterday we had a board meeting uh, with Gaston Together, and you know, we've got board members from, of course, our current chair, um, Tad Hickson, is from Belmont Abbey, and then we have Jennifer Church from uh, Gaston College. And they both, uh, that was on the agenda, just a recap of, of, the, of you guys talking to, to uh, Belmont Abbey, but they both commented uh, about the impact and how well that was received. So uh, to your point, you know, there, so, you know, even when you're not, in the room, people are talking about it, and and so that's a to me that's an indication of of you know the the impact that you guys uh, are making. So specifically on the stigma thing, you know, uh, is there anything specifically anything else you want to kind of share on that? Because I know that's kind of the big focus for you guys. Um, before we kind of move on, uh, I mean, obviously, let me be clear. First time before we finish, we'll make sure that our listeners know more about the organization, how to get involved, how to donate, you know, anything like that before we finish. But is there anything specific on the on the stigma part that you'd like to? I would like yeah. to say one thing. All of us. The bottom line is, all of us struggling with something in life, and none of us would be where we are today without somebody helping us whether it is a, your parents, whether it's a teacher, whether it's your preacher, <laughs> whether it's a friend, whether it's your wife, whether it's your anybody, I'm just saying, just think, stop and think. If someone, someone helped you in life to be here today, so why not help somebody just once? Absolutely. It may be, it may be a small thing. I don't know. Somebody, whether it's a, somebody got a flat tire on the side <laughs> of the road. It can be a small that they cannot pay their electric bill this month. It may be only $50. And I learned that one time that you help, and that person today doing very well because you helped that person one time. And they won't forget that. Yes. So, um, yeah, I would say my the last 23 months or so, too, it seems like, um, to me, it seems like that's even been exacerbated, that, we could, it seems like there should, we could all use a little more grace the last 23 months. Um, it just seems like, um, I don't know, these differences we see, or I, actually, I'm, let me rephrase that. I don't think there are as many differences as we are, are, are being told. I think we all are in the same boat. We just don't seem to have as much grace for each other uh, over the last 22 or 23 months. So I, I appreciate that uh, comment, uh, Nazrul. Um, so you know, this is a this is a podcast about Gaston County and what what uh, the good things that are happening in and around Gaston County. So, uh, Tammy, maybe if you could address this question: Why why is Gaston County better? You know, because the the organization Remembering Austin is here. I think it's better because people are finally talking about it. Right, that is the, a huge thing. But I um, also have to brag on Gaston County a little bit is because when we first started talking about it, I really felt like. We're going to be judged, in all, and I was really reluctant to start talking sure. because of Austin. I didn't want him being judged, but to my surprise, everywhere that we spoke, people were very welcoming, and people wanted to know more, and they could relate because they would say off to the side, I'm dealing with this at home with somebody. So I think one of the big things that Remembering Austin did it's getting people talking. Sure. So he would be happy for that. <laughs> he would be happy for that because even though we're talking about him, his story, it got people talking about right. addiction. So it's helping. It's helping people because people know they're not alone. Now, is there anything you would add to that? or She covered pretty well. <laughs> I think she'd done a good job on that. So. Okay. 
So um, I know the first answer to this next question, maybe I'll stick with you now, is, is you know, maybe the first, this question we often ask, or we ask every week, is how do you envision the organization looking in five or ten years? So the first answer might be it would be nice if it wasn't needed. <laughs> right, but, you know, and, and, and frankly, that's the answer to a lot of the organizations that we've had on is some of the work they're doing. It, w- it would be nice to see that that work's not needed, you know, any longer. But how, how would you, you know, answer that? I heard you say a couple of times just to, to all the help you've had in the two of you doing so much. Uh, but it w- it was, was would you? I would like to see that we go beyond Gaston County maybe. You know, people... Maybe this has started in Gaston County, and I understand people in other states also doing the same things what we are trying to do, but our sister counties like Cleveland County sure. and uh, Lincoln County and you know, uh, Mecklenburg County, because what we hear is uh, we had people come from those counties. They said, oh my God, you guys are doing so much. We right. don't even have anything like this in our county. So. I know we're doing something. Hopefully, they can copy it, follow it, okay. and take it to their county. That's what we like to see. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, I, that's something we we really try hard here at GSM. I mean, don't reinvent the wheel. Go find somebody who's doing something good and and, and copy it. So that, I, I appreciate that. So kind of b- before we move on, is there anything I haven't asked or should have asked, anything, anything else you'd like to share? Um, about the organization before we shift gears slightly to some. I just want you to know that, you know, through because of remembering Austin, I think I already mentioned that we are doing a lot of work through the Gaston Control Substances Coalition. We are also involved with uh, Gaston Community Foundation Run. Uh, we are involved with the Faith Fighting Addiction, which is a part of the Gaston Control Substances Coalition, where they are putting, working with our faith community to educate people in the faith community. But sometime in the faith community, we think it's just a behavioral problem, and uh, it's all up to God. But God helps those who help themselves, because sometime praying is necessary. But at the same time, until we take action, right. nothing going to happen. So I think as a community, if we can bring people together and educate them, I think that's another thing uh, that we are supporting. And we are also involved with, we have a Austin's library at the, uh, Dream Center. at the Dream Center. I'm sorry. And then we have some couple of scholarship at Gaston College that people can use. Okay. Uh, helping Olive Branch Ministry. They do the harm reduction. That when people, some people may not like this, but we support Olive Branch Ministry or there's a group in Greenville, South Carolina called Favor that we support them financially to help buy fentanyl, testing strip and some people may say why are, why are you doing that you encouraging people to go do more drugs it's not that they will do drugs it's just like it's an addiction you cannot stop them but if they can test their drug before they do it hopefully it doesn't have fentanyl and that will save a life but the next step is up to them whether they get help somewhere else but our job is to save that life at least for that one time, and hopefully the next time they don't do drugs, maybe they get help. We believe in giving people a chance. Sometimes it may be one time, it may be two times, three times, four times, but it's not my place to judge, my place to, or our place to really give people a chance, and that's why we are supporting that fentanyl testing strip. So some of our listeners may not, know this and then I just thought about it. as we've mentioned we've we've mentioned fentanyl multiple times can maybe you can you can just share briefly why is that the the big issue and what so you just mentioned that maybe they're getting drugs that have that in it and maybe they didn't know that so what is it about fentanyl that's so such an issue and so bad I guess I mean again I'm not a medical let me be clear <laughs> I have no medical person I've, and I've heard y'all's presentations before talking about it. So does that, is that yes. a fair question? Fentanyl is 100 more times more potent than heroin. 
So anybody who is using needles to do drugs, not even just needles, fentanyl's in pretty much everything right now. Okay. And a grain and a grain of salt, a fentanyl could kill somebody. And a lot of people who are users who are, you know, been using for a long time, they can tolerate a little bit of tol- uh, fentanyl. But if you are somebody who's just trying a drug for the first time, that will kill you. And you're seeing that a lot. A lot of kids are getting uh, pills off of online through the mail, and they have fentanyl in them. Mm, okay. So it's in every, pretty much all the drugs that are tested have fentanyl in it. When Austin died, his was 100% fentanyl, and he didn't know it. Two kinds of fentanyl. So it's very dangerous, wow. and it's in everything. And it's especially in cocaine right now. That's a, a big thing right now. So I just, young people need to realize that, you know, trying one drug one time could kill them. There's a very good chance of that. And you're seeing it a lot with teenagers now. The parents are finding their child dead the next day because they tried a pill. They got it online, mm. Snapchat or it's very dangerous out there now. So I would assume, yeah, I mean, compared to when um, we were younger, between online and social media, <laughs> is, is it fair to say that finding it and getting access to it, is it easier now, or is it is that just me being naive saying that? Yeah, I think it's a lot easier now. Okay. I think you could walk out this door right now and just talk to somebody on the street, and you could get it. It's that easy. Okay. It's very I, easy. I can tell you. It's easier than ordering a pizza. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And I can just open up my phone in the Domino's yeah. app and get a pizza delivery. Now you can that do easy. it with. Okay. But the most of the fentanyl, almost all coming from China. And it's coming to this country by mail. Wow. Sometime even you can get it by mail. So fentanyl is just an, I think if I'm not mistaken, just an probably a, a pound of fentanyl can probably, or a kilo of fentanyl, can kill everybody in Gaston County. That's how dangerous fentanyl is. And the street value is probably a million and a half to $2 million. Okay, I'm going to let that one sink in for a second. So for you listeners out there, um, that's an astounding stat to hear, frankly. So my, my thinking is drugs been here forever, and it is not going to go away anytime soon. The only thing we can do as a community is educate our students, our kids. Hopefully, they understand what, just by doing that one time, what can happen. By doing that one time, how it changed your brain. Because it is a disease, it's not a behavioral thing. Uh, So the best thing you can do is never try it. Because all our brains work differently. It's just like right. you like chocolate. I may not like chocolate. I can have a drink, and you know your friend right next to you, he has to have three by the time you finish <laughs> one. Right. So it's the same thing with our brain, so that if you ever try it, especially when you are young, this is why we have laws. You don't, draw, you don't drink until you are 21 years old because when you are young, you try something, your brain likes it when it's still developing, and you can get hooked to it, anything like that. You're going to get hooked to it very quickly. But if you wait until 21 or 25 years old, you can try the same thing, and you may not get hooked. So this, there is a reason you need to wait before you try something. Sure. And, and uh, fentanyl is in everything. In layman's terms, I mean, I've heard the presentation but from you guys, and I've heard Todd Davis talk about it uh, multiple times from Caremont, but it's, it, if I remember correctly, the phrase often I heard was it, it rewires um, how the brain actually operates. Is that a fair yes. Yes. way to, to word that? Your brain will never be the same again. Right. Okay, so um, like I said, we'll come back and make sure our listeners um, know how to get in touch with you guys, the organization, uh, you know, Organizations like the the the, uh, the substance abuse Co- coalition and um, so, and, but we do have you know, this is a podcast about Gaston County and we do try to um, we're going to shift gears and try to these questions seem kind of I don't know lame 
for for lack of a better term on, on this episode. But you know what? It's I've got the microphone, so we're going to do it anyway. And um, so this is what we call our our gas and county speed round of questions. But just to be clear, this is what your friends and family. This is what everybody who knows you is really wanting to know and get out of this <laughs> podcast today. Okay, so um, Tammy, I'm going to start with you because because I can and. <laughs> We're going to say, what is your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? Because we're really shifting gears here to go to something completely opposite. I'm going to have to say a hot fudge sundae would be my favorite. Hot fudge sundae. That's a great answer. (laughs) Nazarel? Vanilla. Vanilla. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a vanilla guy. (laughs) Somehow. Simple vanilla ice cream. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. (laughs) You know, every time someone says chocolate, I, I always, I think I respond every time. You know, every time I go to I'm going to say I'm going to get something different, and I don't. It's just chocolate. So now she'll sun drop or cheer wine? Cheer wine. I'd have to say cheer wine too. All right, I like that. Tammy, favorite local restaurant? Probably Estia's in Belmont. Oh, ah, okay. I'm, I have not been there, but I'm familiar with it. And I think that's the first. Oh. That's the first answer time we've heard that one. I like Ray Nathan's. Well, Ray Nathan's has got it going on. I mean, if you want some, <laughs> if you want something, um, somebody had to go out and kill for it. That's the place to go, boy. <laughs> Uh, now, your favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County? For me, it's golf. Okay. And it's not because I just play golf. I feel like by playing it, I'm I'm meeting so many different people. Right. And we are involved in seven different golf tournaments that happens every year now since okay. all this happened. And every time we are one of the sponsors. And I feel like that's another way I'm educating the community good, yeah. about remembering Austin, about the opioid use disorder. So, and and another place I like to go is the Crowder Mountain. Yeah, Crowder Mountain is terrific. It's a very unique thing for uh, this landlocked county far away from the beach and the mountains. But we have this little hump right here in Gaston County. As a matter of fact, I'll probably go hike it this afternoon after work today. Tammy, what about you? I'd have to say I like to be outside. I like to exercise, so I'm always walking outside, and I'd have okay. to say Crowder's Mountain would be a great place to do that, too. Yeah, again, Crowder's is great, especially mm-hmm. we're getting close to spring. It's not so not 25 degrees in, on these days. Right. Those are days are really nice out there. So here's you know, the personal, my own personal question I throw in here, and there is one correct answer, uh, and I'm afraid I'm not going to hear it today. Uh, so, Tammy, I'll stay with you. Um, UNC Duke or NC State? Of course. <laughs> Neither one of those. Oh. I would have to say UNC Chapel Hill. Mm. But if I had to pick my favorite, it would be Duke <laughs> mm. between the two. That's like a double wrong answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stay with UNC. Yeah, I'll stay with uh. UNC because that is my favorite. <laughs> that would be Elizabeth over there um, <laughs> on the sound effects. So is that your answer as well, Nashville, well, UNC? UNC. We can, that's got, like I said before we started, that's something, we, we can edit that out. You know, <laughs> and I'll just, I'll voice over NC State as the answer. as we're <laughs> <laughs> Like a old martial arts movie where. Because you know, both of our sons went to UNC Chapel Hill, so. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's why I said I was afraid I knew what the answer was. <laughs> I don't want to have a problem with our, with Joshua <laughs> saying, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> um. So, Nasher, what is something very few people know about you? Don't know about me? Or know about me? Yeah, I mean, what is something very few people know about you that you can share on a family-friendly podcast? One thing people don't know about me is I don't know how to swim. Oh, wow. (laughs) But I'm spending most of my time at the beach. Not very smart. Yeah, so I guess that means on the beach, not... In the, the, in the water? On the, in the water, that's right. <laughs> All right, Tammy? I don't, nothing really interesting. The only thing I can think of is that I got married extremely young. We got married when I was 18, so okay. that's unusual these days. So that was just a couple years ago? Yeah, that was just a couple years ago. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate you sharing that. Tammy, what about uh, a book or blog or article or something that you've read that you would recommend to our listeners? Um, the Unstainable Earth. My son gave me that uh, to read um, about ha- how the everything is changing. Sure. The climate and everything. So that was unstainable? Yes. Okay. Unstainable. All right. Thank you. 
For me, it's not a book, but it's a documentary that I think everyone should watch. It's called The Chasing the Dragon. Okay. And then if you go to our website, Remembering Austin, there is a TED Talk. It's called The TED Ed by Mike Davis. He talks about how brain works and okay. how drug affects our brain. So that's another thing would be very good for people to. Yeah, so I didn't have the total time to watch it yesterday when I was was on the website. But it, yeah, to, to, to just to mention that, the website's very good. Um, Thank you. And so you can, there's a lot to learn and a lot to, to get through there. So the documentary, is there a sp- particular, is that some, where can that be found? Is that YouTube or Netflix? Yes, or, you okay. can go to YouTube. Okay. Thank you. We'll make sure to, to note that in, uh, in, our, in our show notes. So, because I appreciate you kind of indulging me because uh, we really shifted gears there um, to talk about, you know, again, some of, the, some of our local uh, questions here. So we guys got a couple more questions before we finish up. Um, so maybe, Tammy, start with you on this question. Besides you know, your organization and, and the work you, good work you guys are doing in the community, why would you say Gaston County is, is such a great place? I think because people, um, they really want to help. They really do. When they see a need, I think they want to help, um, which, like I said before, was a surprise. Really, it was. But people do want to help. I guess sometimes it's it, – oftentimes you hear the surprise, and it's not a pleasant surprise, right? So yes. it's nice to hear uh, that that was the, the general uh, reaction. And I, and, and I and would agree. People really do care. They really do care. Well, again, I appreciate that. Nazra, how would you answer that? question or did she steal your thunder again <laughs> it's a uh, people uh, i think they take family values very seriously here people are still i see here you know the way our culture is like you grow up your kids are gone here and there and they don't live anywhere near you anymore but we i still see that in gaston county you know we have generations still in gaston county they're working together uh, they're still having that uh, Sunday brunch together. <laughs> and you don't see that too much. Right. You know, most of the places you go, uh, yeah, you may be having brunch with your friend that you just met or a colleague from work, but you don't see that much as a family. But that's one thing Gaston County still have. Right, well, that's terrific. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, I do think, you know, I've, I spent some time away traveling and some time away when I was at NC State. Uh, in, in college, and it was nice to come back because it is a unique place, and it's mostly, not mostly, almost all because of the people, and um, and I am, you know, uh, to your point, I'm a third generation here at the, our company, and um, I'm still here, and, and very happy, and very happy for that. So, um, Nazra, I'm gonna, this last question, I'm going to stick with you here. Um, here you are just a few years ago, knowing what you Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your your twenty year old self? Best thing I can t- tell for a tw- twenty year- years myself is enjoy the moment responsibly, <laughs> because life is short, and I have seen with my own son. So right. you never know what can happen tomorrow. Don't most of us always worry too much about tomorrow. Why not enjoy right now? Sure. And that's the first thing. And second thing I would say is if possible, if possible, get involved with the community, something that you would enjoy. Give something back to your community because your community is giving a lot to you, whether you know it or not. The school you go to, the library you go to, the movie theater you go to, the street you are riding on, it's all your community built all this right. so you can also give something whether your time whether your money anyway if you can volunteer in something that you have a passion for go for it don't worry what anybody else is thinking yeah it took me way too long personally to figure that one out way too long, long after i was 20 um, i can assure you tammy how about how about you how would you answer that question i have to say the same thing to slow down and enjoy right. each day and not wish it away. I feel like we kind of wish our life away. If I can't wait for tomorrow, or right. I can't wait for this. Especially it'll be when better when I'm thirty. It'll be yeah. better when this happens yes. or this happens. When or you're twenty, that's all you do. <laughs> like wish 
for the future, but it goes so fast. So right. just sit back and enjoy the day, I would say. I would like to add one more thing, if you don't yeah, mind. Absolutely. If possible, read a lot. This is the best thing you can do as a 20 years old. It's the habit you can carry with you for the rest of your life. You don't need to have a lot of friends, but you can always have a book wherever you go, and, and you will learn a lot, you'll understand a lot. And uh, things that you think you know, uh, you'll understand that there's so much to learn in, in the world that uh, this will help you. Yeah, I am a I am now, a, a, I would consider myself an avid reader. Of course, I know people who read a lot more than I do, but I probably didn't. That didn't happen with me till I was, I'm 51 now, so probably 35, 36 years old before I really realized what I was missing because of, of not reading. And I'm sure Elizabeth and Amy will tell you here in the room here that I probably drive them crazy with all the books I'm handing out and giving out to people here and um, just gave out a book to a young man uh, over the weekend who I'm helping mentor through confirmation at our church. And um, he looked at me like I had three heads when I handed him <laughs> a book. This might be worth reading. But, of course, Denny told me he's reading, uh, he's 12 years old, and he's reading the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm thinking, uh, I got news for you. If you can read the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you can read this in about 15 minutes probably. Yes, I think the reading is a reading and, if possible, traveling outside of wherever you live. Because I had a chance to travel the world, and you think we have it bad. Oh, we yeah. are on the top 5% of the, we are the 5% of the population, and the way we live, you will not understand until you go see how the other 95 is agree, percent yeah. in the world living, we should appreciate every single thing we have. Yeah, that perspective is nice. I, I had the good fortune uh, when I early on my when I was Rotary Club president here to go to Honduras for a week, and um, there was some we were doing some good work down there. But what I came back with was that perspective of wow, you know, uh, there's more to the world than Gaston County, and um, it does help you appreciate the things that we do have here in this. Um, and, you know, I'm not afraid to say this, this terrific country that we live in and then even on, on a more micro, uh, microcosm level here in Gaston County. So, again, I appreciate you guys answering that question. So, again, kind of the, remember the main, the, our main purpose here is to make, get our community and more people aware of, of the organization Remembering Austin. So where can listeners go to learn more about the organization or get involved or uh, donate or, again, kind of kind of just share what, what, what would be, uh, how would you describe that and what, what can our listeners do? They could go to rememberingaustin.org. Okay. And we also have a fund at the Community Foundation. It's Remembering Austin, if anybody would like to donate there. And like uh, um, Nazrul said, we um, we give to many groups the substance control substance <laughs> the coalition <laughs> was tongue tied there. Um, we give a lot to that, of course. Um, the Dream Center Academy, Gaston College, um, just a lot of different things. So a lot of good. Well, if you notice, I said that the, the substance <laughs> coalition. I've said it. I think I've called it three different things since I we've been on the <laughs> since we've been on the podcast. Gaston. I've even got it. I even got it written down here, and I still Gaston Controlled the, Substances Coalition. Thank you. There yes. you go. <laughs> So did I hear also, right, that you guys are particip participating in the Community Foundation Run? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's a big one coming up, uh, I guess, about a month and a half here, early April. Yeah, April. Yeah, we had, you know, we had Ernest and Aaron on a couple of episodes ago talking about just the run. And so for our listeners out there, if you missed that, what the, the great thing about the run is to say if you wanted to donate to an organization like Remember in Austin, if you can designate that, but then they can, um, the, the Community Foundation will actually match part of that um, from the from the matching funds, they'll 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 match part of that donation. So it's a good way to to get donations to an organization and and kind of uh, maximize um, to some additional funds that are available as opposed to just you know donating directly. So this is something. Then the fundraising is going on right now. Um, what episode? What, what episode was that? Like thirty seven or thirty six? I don't remember. Come on, you guys got to help me out here. So if anybody want to go hear about the Community Foundation Run, just go back a couple episodes. Um, ago and um and, and you can you can hear about that so any final words or any anything you want to to share so our our five listeners will will get <laughs> the best thing is to be kind to others yeah that's kind of what i'm 
meant when I you said it much better and more succinctly when I was talking about especially the last 22 or 23 months you know uh, we seem to have lost some of that um the know, reason I said that, that because sometimes when you look at somebody and we judge so quickly without understanding why that person is acting or behaving a certain way you have to understand it's a thing you can look at it it's called aces a c e s which stands for adverse childhood experiences so gotcha. adverse childhood experiences because what happened to us when we are a kid can affect how we behave right now and how we act right now if we don't get enough help we can go the wrong way or wrong right. direction so please before you judge somebody uh, I think the best thing you can do is without just find out why that person is acting the way they're acting. What can you do to help that person? Is the best thing we can do for our community. It's something we talk a lot here. We have some leadership studies that we do here at GSM the last couple of years, and a big one, big trade or topic we talk about is empathy. And and I think um, for me, humble empathy is um, probably the best leadership tactic or trait again sorry my nc state vocabulary isn't great <laughs> but I, I just think yeah the, i think lack of empathy is something that is, is, a, is a real issue and um being able to you know view the world from somebody else's perspective and having a little bit of that that grace and, and um not jumping to conclusions and, and immediately judging um now it's okay to judge Tar Heel fans um on a day-to-day basis, I think that's something that we do too often is, is those interactions. You know, we, we immediately um, make those judgments. So, um, guys, this has really been, um, how can I put it, enlightening. And um, you know, from, on a, from a personal perspective, uh, being involved with Gaston Together and, and knowing your, your family a, a little and knowing what you guys have been through and, and seeing what you guys do in the community, I just um, – you're doing a good service and you're making an impact and I, and I do uh, greatly uh, appreciate that. These are the kind of things that are required to talk about tough topics and it's required to get things done and, and make progress. So um, I'm grateful for what you guys um, are doing in our community. So you know, something I do um, at the end of every podcast, I do my own book recommendation and maybe a quote uh, or thought for the week and uh, this week is, I think I, you know, I think I used a Disney book last week, but I'm kind of going to stay on that topic um, uh, Robert Iger, who was the CEO for 15 years, he wrote a book called The Ride of a Lifetime. So if you're interested in, in Walt Disney or anything, it, it, business in general, it's really an interesting um, read and, and study about what it was like for him to lead and all the things that happened in the Walt, uh, Walt Disney Company during that time, that time period. So again, it's really interesting, so I'd really recommend that. And the quote of the week comes from John Wood, and I think I've used him once before, but for me, he's one of the maybe maybe the best college basketball coach and and leader uh, that I, that I've studied a little bit. And he said, "Do do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do." So sometimes we find ourselves in situations where, for whatever reason, there's something we used to do or something that we think is impossible because of some circumstance, and it keeps us from doing other things that can make us successful. Um, so again, uh, that's one of my favorites. So. Again, do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. So to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address at podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us and spread the word on our social media platforms. Thanks again to Tammy and Nazareth for being our guests today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Amy Anderson and Elizabeth King from GSM Services and edited here locally by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us. And please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's Great. <laughs> <laughs>